Hello and welcome to today's lesson on elastic potential energy, which is part of the materials topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how you calculate the elastic potential energy stored in a material. So if we are successful and we have learned in today's lesson, we should be able to recall Hooke's law, calculate values using Hooke's law, and then experimentally derive if material is obeying Hooke's law. So, with this links into the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics Specification 3.4.2.1 Bulk Properties of a Solids, in particular Elastic Strain Energy. So, what do we know? We know that we can calculate the energy stored in an object exhibiting elastic behaviour with a force extension graph. Because for an object exhibiting elastic behaviour, the deformant force and the extension it causes are directly proportional. So, as a result, this produces a line of best fit which is a straight line through the origin. So for an object obeying Hooke's law, the energy stored by the stretched material is equal to the work done on the material in stretching it. Now we know previously that work done is equal to force times by displacement, but this leads to an issue when we look at this force extension graph, because as you can tell from the force extension graph, the deformant force isn't constant, it's changed changing constantly as indicated by the straight line upwards. So as a result, we need to use the average force in the equation instead. Now the average equation in this particular example is going to be a half F because the starting force is zero, the line goes through the origin, and the final force will just define as F. So the average value from zero to F is half F. So we can substitute this into the equation. So we can now say that work done is a half times by F times by the displacement, which we'll call delta L. So as a result, you'll notice that this is the area under the line of best fit. So the area under the line of best fit forms a triangle, which has the equation a half base times height. So it's a half times by force times by the extension, which is delta L. Now the elastic potential energy is stored in a stretched spring. Now if the spring was suddenly released, this elastic energy is then suddenly transferred into the kinetic energy of the spring. So this means that the work done on the spring is stored as elastic potential energy. Now this is important because it means that our object is acting as an elastic object. So therefore Hooke's law is being obeyed. Now we know that Hooke's law is F is equal to K times by delta L. Now we can substitute this value into the F of the work work done equation. So that gives us a second equation for the work done, which is equal to a half times by spring constant K times by the extension delta L squared. Now it's important to note that if the material was stretched beyond the elastic limit, some work is then done in changing the position of the atoms. So this will not be stored as elastic energy, which will be later released. So this means that when an object is inelastic, these work Work done equation stated cannot be used. They can only be used if it's an elastic object. So let's just clarify what we've covered in this particular lesson. Work done is equal to the elastic potential energy stored in a stretched spring. And we know that the work done is equal to a half times by force times by the extension or F, half F delta times by delta L. And we also know that work done is equal to a half times by spring constant times by extension squared or a half KL uh, delta L squared. Now it's also important to note we can work out the work done or the elastic potential energy stored in a material because it's the area under the line of best fit for a force extension graph. So whilst the gradient of a force extension graph indicates to you the spring constant, the area under the force extension graph for an elastic object when the line is a straight line, it gives you the work done or the elastic potential energy stored. So we should 
should be able to, from today's lesson, understand Hooke's law, elastic limit, F equals K delta L, where K is the stiffness and spring constant, and we know the elastic potential energy in how to calculate it. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to recall Hooke's law, calculate values using Hooke's law, and experimentally derive if a material is obeying Hooke's law. So if it, I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on elastic potential energy, which is found in the materials topic of AQA A-Level Physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.